shouldn't be too far. I'm surprised we can't ride up off the uh, backside of a car. That'd be pretty cool. Nothing special because you could do that in Bully. A Rockstar game, but it'd still be neat. An abandoned building near the Sakura River. This must be where Mikushiba's body was found. And it's locked up tight. The lock looks easy to break, but it's still daytime and there are people around. I should see if there's another way in. Alright. Hmm. Should I just break the lock and force my way in? No, it's still daytime and there's people around. I should see if there's another way in. Um, Suspicious. that window's open, but it looks impossible to get up there. Seems like sneaking in from the front is out of the question. I should check the side or back of the building. Yeah. Uh-huh. Alright, so I guess I go over by the park. Then I might see something. Maybe? Broken fencing, huh? I think I can get through with a little effort. I'll have to head through the rear head through the rear of the building. Well, if the front will work, I'll just have to improvise. Made my way through it. Now hopefully there's a way in on this side. Oh, I'm sure there is. Aha, an open window. I can use it to sneak in. I need something to give me a boost if I'm gonna climb up there. Let's see if I can find something. Maybe I can use this to give myself a boost. Ah, uh, second thought, no. Trash can? No. What the? Here's good. I can come up from this spot. Okay. Cool. Uh, before we go up, though, let's see if we can find any technique books or something. Nope. Okay. Get through the year at these areas by taking a running start and then pressing circle at the exact right time. About wall running. You can cross large gaps by running along the wall. Extra sprint toward a gap. Circle when prompted, run along the wall. About bar vaulting. You can also swing across iron bars to clear large gaps. This process is very similar to wall running. X run toward a gap. Circle when prompted, swing across a bar to safety. Huh. Neat. What? So I really have to be careful of timing, actually. Hmm. Okay. Now if we go here... Now it looks like we're gonna have to do that wall running again. Goodness, I made it. I'd be worried at the higher height that, uh, end up getting hurt. Which it looks like I'll probably need to go up. And basically hop across. Really? Still surprising to me that they have a limit of three. Doesn't really make any sense. Uh, can I not hop up? There we go. Jumping while climbing. 
While climbing a wall, move the left analog stick and circle to jump to another section of the wall. If you take proper position as shown, you'll be able to make the jump. Okay. Mysterious fruit. Sure, that's good. Hopping up. Okay. And then drop down. And we're at the wall. Cool. Alright. Now we can check out the crime scene. Hello? Anybody here? Coming through. Now where exactly was the body? There's got to be some clues that'll give me that. Probably, and that's just a guess, the big arrow. It's probably a good sign. Huh? Are these burn marks? Yes, yes they are. Burn marks on the floor. Looks like there's red powder dust on the surface. What the? This blood stain has got to be blood. This is where Mikoshiba's body was. Yep. Hey. What the? It's nice and bright outside. I'm sure glad I came to this abandoned dump before it got dark. Hmm. Okay. New info. Uh, the marks and the blood. That arrow must indicate the body's location. I guess the killer liked to have everything lined up. This building matches up with a photo, so Mickey Sheep was alive when he was brought here. Which means this isn't just where his body was dumped, it's where the murder actually happened. Ooh. Huh? Someone's coming. Crap! The cops just had to come back to the scene now. Hey. I heard something. Who's there? Uh-oh. State your name and purpose. Uh, well... Get some backup over here. Hey, now wait a second. Can we maybe talk this out? Put your hands up and turn around. Who are you and what were you up to? Takayuki Yagami. The Yagami Detective Agency. Yeah, in Kamurocho. Weren't you the guy at Serio yesterday? I could have sworn I saw your face there. Huh? Maybe? The name's Watanabe. Kanagawa PD Division 1. Charm, I'm sure. Kisuke Watanabe, Criminal Affairs Division. This fella here is Sakurai. Sup? So, you think barging into a crime scene was a real bright idea? What? I thought you guys were done here. I figured I could take a look around. Uh huh. What? You wouldn't happen to be working with Genda Law, would you? Huh? You hear on Shirosaki Sensei's business? Saori Shirosaki, right? The grouchy one. Okay, how'd you know? Well, it started when Mikoshiba's body turned up. Once our investigation kicked off, we found out about that pervert cop in Tokyo. Seems he knew where the body would be. But when we went to go see him, HQ pumped the brakes. They said no interviews on this one. Much to our amusement, we ended up being directed to Shirosaki, the perv's lawyer. So these cops met with Sari-san to learn about the horror incident. The being that Genda Law Office is in Kamrocho. And you're a Kamrocho detective working your case. That means either the two of you are connected, or I'm 
really losing my touch. Well, you've certainly got my number. Now that you know, how about taking these cuffs off? <laughs> Smooth, but the jury's still out on you, pal. First, you got any thoughts on all that? On anything specific? The part about HQ locking us out of interviewing a horror smart guy. Here we are with a material witness who, it turns out, knew about a corpse rotting away for two months. And those Tokyo chuckleheads just shut us out. Balls even for those tight asses. When he says HQ, I'm assuming that's Tokyo PD. Seems they're stepping on the local police's toes. Any crimes that happen in Ichincho fall under Kanagawa PD's jurisdiction, not Tokyo's. Which explains why Watanabe here might be ticked off. Ahara was Tokyo PD. So, wouldn't they want to protect him? They probably want it handled discreetly. Nah, <sighs> if only it were that simple. This isn't about protection. They'd get burnt real bad if they tried to bury this shit under the rug. Besides, not only is this cop a nasty creep, he's got ties to a fucking murder. Another prefecture blows the lid on that, the top brass may as well kiss their jobs goodbye. Heads would roll. They've got to wash the shit stains off their laundry to keep their asses clean. Yeah. I could see how that makes sense. Anyway, so HQ told us their boys would look into Ahara. What we had to do was hand them our notes on the murder. Can you believe that crap? Like hell we're gonna bend over for them. But look where that's got us. Now nobody's interrogated Ahara. Are Kanagawa and Tokyo PD really fighting over who gets the credit? Don't tell me they're that petty. <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. While well, the higher-ups play intel hoarding games, Ahara's just sitting pretty. Shit. The cop's supposed to be chasing down the perps. Instead, here I am with my hands tied, bitching to a P.I. So I'm your therapist now. I was gonna take you down to the station and put the squeeze on you. But if you're a half-decent detective, maybe we could collaborate. Oh yeah? I mean, you came all the way from Kamurocho to sniff around here, right? I highly doubt you found much, but tell me something I don't know and maybe the cuffs will fall off. You proposing a deal? Depends on if what you've got is worth making one. This is going to be such a waste of time, but I want some info from these cops myself. Probably best to collaborate with these guys and give them a little more insight. Okay. So, I'm sure they've already seen the blood. Already seen the scorch. Haven't seen the photo. Okay. How about this? What the hell? Hiro Mikoshima. Was this taken here? Right before he died? Where did you get this? What kind of shit you trying to pull? I could tell you better with the cuffs off. <laughs> You're craftier than I thought. Fine, let him loose. All right, let me get this straight. Right before you met up with this Serio High teacher, a strange woman showed up with this photo. Yeah, I couldn't get a good look at her. But it seems whatever threat she made worked. Sawa-sensei wouldn't say a thing after that. Saw was the one who supervised Mikoshiba for his student teaching program. I know that. So, this woman you're talking about must have had it in with the culprits. You know, they were working in a group. That's quite a revelation. What makes you so sure about that? Sakurai, show him the photo of the body. And spare me the protocol lecture. I'm sick of this going nowhere. If Hotshot here is going to look into Ahara for us, we may as well take advantage of it. You're the boss, Nabe-san. Ah, this had to be two months after his death. The body looks pretty decayed. Miko Shiba was last seen alive two months ago, on October 7th, 6.30 a.m. He was talking to his mother as he exited their house back in the city. Since there were no other sightings of him, it's likely he was abducted a short ways from his home. This had to be done by vehicle, as common sense would tell us. So there must have been at least two suspects, a driver and a handler. And with me, I'd have put three on the job. So that's why you figured it was a group effort. 
Sounds logical to me. Mm-hmm. Now, according to the autopsy report, they found food in the poor guy's stomach. Based on how digested it was, we can assume he was killed at least an hour after breakfast, putting it around 7.30. And not long after, he was brought here. His throat was slit with a knife. Get all that hot shot. So on the day Mikoshiba went missing, he was abducted near his home and he was killed right here no earlier than 7.30 a.m. And what was our friend Ehara doing at that time? The old perv was walking through Ikebukuro's ticket gates around 7.43 a.m. This was stated in court and corroborated by multiple security tapes. But if that's true, he couldn't possibly have killed Mikoshiba. It's 30 kilometers between here and Ikebukuro. Yeah, that's the meat of his alibi. Yet somehow, he knew Mikoshiba's body would be discovered two months after his arrest, despite being in custody the whole time. Now, there's no doubt he's connected to the killers. If we could just put the screws to him, he'd squeal. Damn it, HQ! Why the hell are we out here working the site if it's already been picked clean? All right, Nabe-san. Deep breaths. Yeah, yeah. But do you see why we've got to get someone in to talk to Ehara? Hell, big Shirosaki sensei for a visit if you have to. HQ can't say squat about his attorney visiting. Hell of a cop. We only just met and I'm halfway to becoming his gopher. Then again, I guess I'd do the same thing. What you said raises some questions of my own about the crime scene and the body. Oh yeah? Ask away then. Now here's a chance to get some pertinent facts. I need to ask what evidence the police collected from the scene. Hmm, this is an interesting way. Guess we'll end up going through all these. How narrow is the window for Mikoshiba's estimated time of death? Based on how digested his breakfast was, he was killed somewhere between 7.30 and noon on the morning of October 7th. Pretty impressed you can narrow it down like that with a two-month-old corpse. Yeah, well, the window gets much bigger if we consider the possibility that the killers forced Mikoshiba to eat. At any point after the kidnapping, they could have made him eat a typical Mikoshiba family breakfast. It's possible. All they had to do is make him say what he usually eats. Good. We're on the same page. Now, if we take into account the decomposition of the body, Mikoshiba's estimated time of death actually ranges from 7.30 a.m. on October 7th all the way to the end of that month. So about three weeks. Three weeks? That's a massive gap. Can't we narrow it down further? The body's just too decomposed to do that. But expand the time frame all you want. Ehara was in custody through the whole thing. So we couldn't have done the deed. Right. He spent two months behind bars. I hate to think a different crime got him such a strong alibi. In any case, someone else killed Mikoshiba. If we could just get in the same room as him, we'd know who that is. What else? I need to find out everything police collected from this crime scene. Alright, so we'll just be going through the list. What was the victim's cause of death? The news called it a massive hemorrhage. Yep, they slit his throat and let him bleed to death. After tying him to a chair, the killer stood behind him. And lifting his chin with his left hand, his right hand slid the knife. Sounds like you guys have that bit on lockdown, huh? It's one of the few things we're sure of. Okay, now the burn marks. I noticed the burn marks on the floor in the shape of an arrow. What's with that? Somebody lit flares here, the ones that shoot red smoke. It was only a matter of time before the fire department got called, and they're the ones who stumbled on the body. Pretty obvious the culprit set up a smoke signal to make sure the body got found. They probably had the timing all worked out with Ahara so he could predict the body's discovery from maximum impact. And that's exactly what he did, just as the judge handed down the sentence. What would be the point of that, though? <laughs> For all I know, he just wanted to blow everyone's minds. Yeah, there's definitely more to it, though. What shape was the body in when it was found? Full of maggots and decomposing bad. His hands were zip-tied behind the chair, securing him in place. The cause of death was the throat wound, 
But before that, they really worked him over. Rough way for the guy to go. Damn. They even broke all his fingers. On both hands. That sounds... painful. Fucked up, right? I'm guessing a professional did this. Could be Yakuza, could be Mafia. Take your pick. We've got some guys checking that angle out too, just to make sure there's no stone left unturned. Hmm. Okay. Building honor. Doesn't this place have a manager? I'm sure it wasn't always like this. There is a property owner. He's been around Eugene Show forever, but the building's been deserted for two years. Apparently, there was a padlock to keep the homeless out, but it was long gone by the time they found the body. Broken by the killers, most likely. Alright, and last question. The murder weapon. Has the murder weapon been found? No. There were no weapons at the scene. A real shame. That'd be some decisive evidence. So when you said it was a knife, was that a guess based on analyzing the wound? I wouldn't call it a guess. The coroner outright stated that the weapon was a sharp, knife-like instrument. Okay, no more questions. I think I'm starting to get the picture here. That should be it for questions. Tell me, you detectives out in Camarocho always this hands-on? Sorry, what? I'm saying you guys were quick. We had barely set foot in Serio High, and you already had the run of the place. Hell, you even closed in on that Sawa Sensei and got a meeting with her. I was just lucky to have been there on another case. Is that right? Hmm. What? What's wrong? Somebody's spying on us with binoculars. No shit? Three men. Thirties, probably. The one with binoculars is wearing a black jacket. My number's on my card! <laughs> Yagami! Hey, wait up! Ah, so we're going to a chase. All right. I gotta say, these chases are a lot more interesting since there's more to it than just oh, dodge everything. Turns into oh no, yeah, more to deal with. As well as I gotta worry about my health. Oh no! I wanna just pick up that stamina. Cause it'll help keep my health up. Kicking. During a chase, things like soccer balls, spear cases, or buckets may be on the road. When you get near one, quickly press the button that appears to kick at your target. If you nail your target, they'll lose health. If they're too far or they turn a corner and you lose visuals, the kicked object may not hit them. That's one way for this to go quicker. That's so cool, actually. Riding the wall. I have a feeling those will be very decisive on the whole which way did they go? Left or right? Oh, there's soccer ball. Awesome. Sure, that may not help the distance all that much, but definitely helps at least take out down his stamina. Make it a little bit easier and faster to get him. Nice. Easy catch. Damn, hot shot. You're quick on your feet. So let's hear why this fool had eyes on us. He claims he just wanted to see the scene for himself. It's true. Ask the other two guys with me. They'll be here any minute. So you were here gawking, is that it? <laughs> Better than busting in like you own the place. I thought that was water under the bridge. So who are you? 
Why'd you run? I ran because I saw a cop jump out a window and charge at me. Are you saying you'd stick around if you saw that? <laughs> he thinks you're a cop. Should we get you a badge and a hat? I'd be honored. Do you have any ID on you? Uh, will my license work? Kake san, age 30. What do you do for work? Oh, I'm just a professional pencil pusher. Biotech, planning and management. Are your other two pals biologists too? No, uh, one's an investor and the other's a consultant. We all went to high school together. It says here you have a Tokyo address. What brings you to Yokohama? Oh, well, I'm organizing a class reunion uh, in Chinatown. So I came to scope out the location in advance. This ain't the way to Chinatown, pal. Oh, uh, we thought since we came all the way to Yokohama, we might as well peek at the crime scene. <laughs> Pretty morbid idea, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose. What high school did you all attend? Kurakawa Academy. A private school in Tokyo. So it's not Suryo High. Man, are these guys seriously not linked to the crime in any way? Ah, they might not, hey, but... Over here! Only we'll to verify your buddy's identification as well. I suggest you all cooperate. Nabi-san! Alright, you jokers are free to go. Appreciate you being so civil. Guess that settles it. They're just dumbass rubberneckers. <laughs> Tough break, huh? After all you went through chasing them down. I don't mind. My models to always swing for the fences. <laughs> yeah, well, your strikeout was pretty amusing. The guy who goes down swinging is all right in my book. Now that that's settled, give my regards to Shirosaki Sensei. If you get some dirt on Ihara soon. Well, that was interesting. I'm starting to piece things together. It's good timing for a chat with Sari san, actually. But for now, I should. Head back to Yokohama N9. I can give Sari san a call. Alright. New evidence. For a few of these, actually. Uh, Kisuke Watanabe, detective from Kanagawa PD, Division 1. As the investigator and hero Mikushiba's murder case, he asked Sari for information about Akihiro Ihara. The arrow, the blood, the decomposed body. Actually, um, direct cause of death lists his blood loss from having his throat slashed by a sharp object. Make sure his hands were bound behind him with a zip tie, and all the bones in his fingers were broken while he was still alive via heavy blunt force. Based on the analysis of his stomach contents, the estimated time of death sometime after 7:30 a.m. on October 7th. Same details. Same details. Okay. Now, actually, let's check for the hunt on the UFO. Now that it's nighttime, for now it should come out. Whatever it is. Sorry, whatever it actually is. Then. What the? Actually, hear it. What the?
Well, the sad thing is I can hear it. I just don't know where exactly it is. That's it. Oh my, is that an actual UFO? See, I knew we'd see it. How about that? I'm a Sawa Senpai. Aliens do exist. <laughs> Couldn't that just be a searchlight? No way, what searchlight could do that? I knew it, I knew it. Yabuki kun, aren't you getting a little ahead of yourself? Is that I'm a Sawa? After all, the term UFO was invented by the U.S. Air Force to describe any flying object that has yet to be identified. It can apply in all sorts of situations. At this point, it's still a huge assumption that we just witnessed alien activity. It's far more likely to have a reasonable explanation. You're seriously denying what you just saw with your own eyes? How stubborn are you? This is exactly what's wrong with the MRC. Well... Hey. Hey, I'm a Sala. Hack me, son. What are you doing here? Well, uh, I'd seen all sorts of posts on chatter about a potential UFO sighting, so I figured I might check it out. Why are you here? I was invited out by Yak Yabuki kun to tag along with the Supernatural Research Club to look for UFOs. Hmm? There's a Supernatural Research Club at Surya? So you're yakking me, son. I've heard much about you. I'm Akahiko Yabuki, president of the SRC of Surya High. This is Aka. Akari Tokioki. Sorry, Tokioko. Yoka. Ah, let me try it one more time. Tokioka. There we go. The vice president. Um, good evening. <laughs> so, you're all out here UFO watching, huh? Kind of like a joint case between the MRC and SRC. That's cute. I can see how supernatural mysteries are pretty similar to detective type mysteries, too. Hey! Yagmi san, what are you saying? Yes, yeah, supernatural research may share some similarities with the work that we do, but in the end, they're still totally different. I don't know about totally different. Maybe more like cousins? <sighs> Listen, supernatural events are indeed unexplained mysteries, but that's simply due to the current limitations of human knowledge. In other words, the term is reserved for phenomena that can't be rationally explained by science or logic. Hold on. Well, our own mysteries are just more stuff we can't explain with our current logic yet, right? That's true, but as a premise, mysteries are solved with rational thinking rather than pure speculation. This has been the foundation of the genre for centuries. No matter how complex in the end, any mystery can be reduced to rational, factual statements. Compare this to supernatural writing, speculative tales with no way of verifying their accuracy, enjoyed for their impenetrable nature, open-ended questions, and what-ifs replacing research facts. The two genres of writing are like water and oil, the moon and the sun, natto and Italian food, Urashima Taro and Edgar Allan Poe. Now do you get it? Yeah, I'm not really well-read enough to know if that last comparison works, but I've got the gist. I have this right. In fact, what I'm really hearing is the MRC and SRC are, all, are sort of rival clubs, aren't what? they? Rivals? That implies we'd ever step in the ring together in the first place. Yes, please don't put us together with the likes of the MRC. We're the ones who don't shy away from the appeal of the unexplained. Yabuki-kun is because there's a truth behind the tale. That's what appeals to mystery lovers. Would a pirate embark on a dangerous voyage without knowing whether he'll ever find treasure? I'm a Sawa-senpai. You can't deny that there are unsolvable mysteries in this world. I refuse to become some hun humdrum fact finder who's forgotten to cherish the real mysteries of life in this universe. <sighs> humdrum? Oh, come on. You are still rivals. Um, senpai, we've got more eyewitness reports in a nearby location. What? We've got some busy skies tonight. Let's move. 
Ah, wait for me. <laughs> ah, stupid saucer chasers. Bite me out for some joint research just to ditch me? They're certainly passionate about whatever it is they're doing. <sighs> I'm just going to stop by the bookstore, then go home. A new mystery will be a lot more rewarding than trying to track them down. Yeah. Alright, have a good night. Boy, well, sure didn't expect to see a UFO while in town. Can't forget about the abduction part of the rumors, though. Might be something serious there. Maybe I'll keep an eye to the sky, just in case. The SRC's hunt for the truth. Okay. So. Oh, really? Something over there that's actually related to this. Okay. Didn't expect that. We're gonna head on over there then. Figure out where this side case goes. What's gonna happen with it? Nice. Getting some points. Not bad, not bad. Almost there. Oh no! There we go. Throw down the skateboard again. Uh, yeah, he's a fanatic. Great galactic beings, I beseech you, come for me. Take me away to the first furthest reaches of the stars. Senpai, cut it out. What if someone sees you? Yeah. It's the SRC. But what the hell is Yabuki doing? Being an idiot, I'd say. Hey. Greetings. Ah, Yagami-san. Were you led here by the wavelengths as well? The what nows? I'm capable of picking up certain wavelengths and me by UFOs. Huh. Are you messing with me? Huh. <laughs> Being a sixth sense, the process is quite difficult to comprehend, let alone put into words. My father was also a st strong receiver, so I believe the ability is genetic. <sighs> you know, uh, Serio has a nurse who might be able to help you. Yagami-san, look, right there, a UFO. Where? What? It was just there, damn it. I was positive tonight would be the night. I have to say, Yubuki kun, you seem pretty invested in this UFO stuff. And you as well, Yagami san. Are you also here to watch hmm. the skies? Well, I'm really just curious because I'd heard UFOs were involved in some sort of abduction here a few years back. Oh. Hmm? Hmm? Did I say something strange? What you've heard about an abduction is true. Two years ago, a UFO appeared over in Jincho and someone huh? went missing. Really? Yagmi-san, you're a detective, right? Yeah. yeah, that's my day job. Do you think you could track someone down who's been abducted by aliens? I have to say, I've never done it before. At any rate, would you be willing to hear me out? Sure, yeah. In that case, I'll wait for you at Wet gotcha. Kitchen. Got it, see you soon. If Yabuki knows about someone being abducted, I ought to follow up who knows the real reason behind it. But still sounds like a missing person case. Okay. Where's what kitchen? Guess it's right there. Okay. A little surprise, what kitchen is also in uh, Ichincho. As soon as you said that name, I'm thinking, hey, that's exactly what's in Kamarocho. Oh! <laughs> 
And stay down. Alright, I'd say I made some pretty decent progress in this recording. I'll end it there, and when we come back, we'll further pursue the UFO sighting, as well as the uh, abduction. But, otherwise, I hope you guys are enjoying this walkthrough, and I'll see you in the next recording.